the Edgeless Horseman here again uh, on the 26th uh, of January 2023. In today's or in this video, I'll talk a bit about magna mining, which I think is uh, probably the best example in uh, quite a while uh, why it's really pretty easy to beat the junior sector uh, if you have a longer time frame than the market uh, which basically is everyone else and uh, also if you just simply use common sense um, have some kind of grasp on risk reward uh, and some patience basically uh, i mean this is uh, yeah th this is a slam dunk in terms of just pointing some stuff out uh, which one would think is pretty common sense uh, but lo and behold I mean 1 in 20 or something like that actually beats an index that's because they don't use common sense or uh, don't use it enough at least and typically have no patience and typically always uh, try to uh, be right uh, in short time frame well not even be right it's that uh, for whatever reason or I mean, I mean I guess it's kind of human uh, but the biggest fear any investor has I, I shouldn't even say investor your typical retail speculator the biggest fear a retail speculator has it is that what they own might go down tomorrow that, that's it that's pretty much it uh, if you just remember that at all times it makes it kind of easy why and it explains why people uh, uh, always tend to sell lows sell cheap and they buy high when the short-term trend is up and the longer it's been up the more likely they are to buy because they you know the, the, if something has gone up uh, you know straight up basically the longer it's gone straight up and maybe it's actually become very overvalued but uh, the trend is so clear uh, that people don't believe there's a chance that it's going to go down tomorrow and the opposite happens at lows and so 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 take magna for example which is uh, i think uh, the best risk reward story uh, uh, that I know of in the junior mining space uh, and, and still I mean still is uh, it has been for quite some time uh, I think it's just absolutely ridiculously cheap I expect to make a lot of money on magna mining and it is not from short-term speculation uh, unlike 95% of people uh, so uh, what's going on now for example we've talked about this before uh, you have, uh, I think it is either the 30th or, or in ja of January, January or 1st of February uh, when the private placement on the 27 cents becomes free trading. Basically, if somebody wants to sell from that point, they can if they want to. Uh, and that is why there's a lot of, uh, I mean, why, why there's some bashers, etc. It's basically fear mongering. I mean, there's some obvious stuff. Uh, unfortunately, Rocket Red has uh, blocked me, uh, but uh, he's pretty much the textbook guy. It's like, you know, the promoters have the money you get, you got the paper, remember that. I don't even know what that means, uh, but he's, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> one of the most avid pumpers or bashers uh, on all of CEO, I would say. Can't I even. Ignored by many controversial, yada yada. Uh, so he's, he's a real, you know, <laughs> shit starter, let's say. And uh, I mean, we kind of all talk our books, obviously, if we're long a stock, we, we, we are bullish, etc, etc. Uh, I tend to never bash a stock, 
uh, even if I want to get in cheaper, that is one of the rules I have. You will typically never see me bash a stock. Uh, uh, because I, I, I just don't like it. It's like you never know who you might get to sell just because you want to get in cheaper. Uh, and that's actually, in the case of Magna, for example, I mean, I am I'm so bullish on Magna. Uh, it's like I almost didn't want to do uh, this video, let's say, because I am I have a lot of shares in Magna, and I think uh, the current price is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, apparently, if today, for example, like somebody sold six thousand three hundred shares just at the end, I think, and it went down by five percent. I mean, that's not a lot of shares. Obviously, uh, so one, I mean that looks like painting the tape, pretty much. Uh, uh, so so I mean th this should already be up two hundred percent from here, and we saw that in a uh, there was a research report uh, from Research Capital Corp. Magna raises eighty million, increasing target price to three dollars per share. Uh, that is yeah, maybe that's around fair value. Uh, Maybe actually, I think it should be a bit higher, but typically, uh, I mean, analysts tend to be quite uh, conservative. But but still, you might see some juniors with a target price that's like 50% higher or something. In this case, uh, since Magna is so advanced, meaning that the value in their deposits, I mean, they are not too far from mo uh, being monetized. So, I mean, any project out there can have a net present value, etc. But it's like, yeah, the market might not care. And the, the value might not be obvious until that asset is in production, let's say. And maybe that takes three, four hundred million dollars to actually get into production. Magna is fully permitted and might have some kind of cash flow within 12 months. And basically showing the actual value of the ore, etc. Uh, so I don't, I mean, even though it's like today, for example, uh, on paper, I'm down quite a bit on paper because I have so many shares of uh, Magna Mining. Uh, at the same time, it's like, this is what I see. I would agree. I mean, three dollars sounds reasonable. I I don't think that's um, uh, you know overly bullish. I don't I don't think that's there's a lot of hype in that. Just uh, again, it's like just based on peer comparison. Uh, Magna doesn't really have any peers, so so I don't think this is any sort of uh, uh, um, let's say overhyped target price. Basically, fair values. Okay. And this highlights it all, uh, everything, I think. It's like, my base case is that, yes, I think this, and this wouldn't get it to uh, Jason's uh, 1 billion target even. So it's like, yeah, I I think there's an over an 80% chance, let's say, that I'll at least minimum get 180% from here in Magna Mining. Uh, that kind of return and that type of probability is not something I see in any other stock, I would say. That is why it's like n not only 100%. I mean, that is... You would be happy with 180% if it took three years. I don't, I don't think it will take three years. I think uh, it will be at $3... Uh, uh, within 12 months, may maybe within six months. I I'm not 100% sure, but we, we know there's gonna be a lot of assays and PE results, yada, 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 advancements. So as I see, it's like the risk reward, why this is such a no-brainer is that uh, there's some, let's say, bashers or shorters or people who sold out because they are hoping to be able to buy cheaper. To me, uh, those are just bad investors slash, slash speculators because it the risk reward is so obnoxiously skewed to the upside because if let's say you the one who sold 5600 shares at the end let, let's say that is not painting the tape let, let's say that is a legit guy who like ah oh, i think you know there there might be some 
risk to the downside in the short term. Uh, what he's saying that if he understands the case, if if he literally understands what he what he owned, uh, that's one of the most stupid sells I've ever seen. I mean, personally, I think anybody who's selling now is stupid, uh, taking way too much risk. And what I mean by that is that this is, in my opinion, is a probable return. Minimum, let's say minimum probable return from from this uh, share price level. If you sell because you, I mean, what, what you're saying, if, if you're basically selling because you fear that there might come shares uh, on the market, you are actively, knowingly, or maybe not knowingly because you don't understand any better, but it's like you, you are giving away what I would say one of the highest probability great returners over uh, the, uh, within this year. You you give away that meaning you sell your position so you you don't have this story anymore. Let's say because you think there's a risk of it. I don't know what your target price would be. Let's say it could, uh, I don't know, 10, 15. But what it basically is, is that you're giving away, in my opinion, 180% upside. Uh, because you're willing to gamble that you might avoid, let's say, hey, I don't know, it's like 15%, you know, downside on average. I mean, theoretically, any stock can go uh, to zero and to infinity, obviously. So we'll have to make some kind of judgment. But it's like, that is some of the most egregiously greedy things I've ever seen. And, and that happens a lot. And that is how you beat this market. You take the wealth from the short term speculators, traders. It's like Buffett said, uh, the market is a uh, uh, wealth transfer mechanism from the impatient to the patient, some, something along those lines. To me, this is some of the stupid cells you will ever, you will ever see or should ever see in the uh, junior mining sector. It's just egregious, egregiously greedy. Because if you're wrong, if you are wrong or you don't have time to get in, let's say, because one thing is that, well, first of all, this guy Rocket Red, he today's uh, uh, today's free trading cheap paper, cheap PP paper buyer beware. Uh, 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 I think he's suggesting we she the latest P, uh, private placement has no hold period free trading plus that is bullshit. I'm assuming he knows this, so he's basically lying to everyone, you know, in everyone's face. He is saying that uh, as soon as this private placement closed, they could sell immediately. And, and that is, again, that is just, that is just a straight up lie. And also, who the hell would, they didn't even get warrants. No warrants at $1.10 per share. And he's like, you know, they're probably going to sell. I mean, are you kidding me? So anyway, I mean, I really, really dislike that stuff. I am biased as well, but I don't, I don't do this kind of stuff. I don't say things I know is like 100% untrue. I am biased, but I'm not straight up lying. <laughs> um... Uh, I might be wrong, and I, I, I am wrong uh, now and then, but, but this is just, uh, I, I think it's obnoxious, personally. Uh, because this, I, I think, the, I mean, this guy has been around for quite some time uh, in this space, and uh, for him to say this, the latest private placement has no hold period, that is just 100% wrong. Uh, so, so you know, you see what we're dealing with, and I don't think he would even bother being here if he. I, I mean, I assume that he is at least. 
competent enough that he understands that this is literally one of the best cases in the entire space. So from that perspective, if you know that, hey, this is going to go to $3 and higher uh, with a very high probability, uh, which you can't say for many juniors that, yeah, they're, they're you know, eight, let's say 85% chance that it's at least going to go up 200% or 180%. That you can't say, I can't say that about many juniors I own. Magna is uh, the only one that fits that kind of probable return at least. Uh, so in that case, if I was totally shameless, I would actually bash my own largest position. Because I see, again, any risk to the downside, that is temporary. The market is going to take care of uh, irrationality. Irrationally cheap stocks will eventually go towards fair value. Uh, so if I didn't know any better or actually felt that, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bash this because I want to make even more money. You know, I am ready if some, if let's say, it goes down even more. I'm going to be buying all the way down. And uh, maybe we were just talking. I mean, it might have bottomed today. We have no idea. It might go down five percent more. Whatever. I I, I am uh, gonna add. I actually uh, was at the gym today when it closed, so I didn't even have a chance to uh, buy the late day dip. Uh, but but it's this is again. Uh, this is how how I see it. There might be some short-term uh, price action. We don't know. And of course, I mean, if you look at Dundee, for example, they took 25% of the 27 cent private placement. And they added in this one. Not only did they not sell, take any profits, take money off the table, they doubled down. So if they're in the 27 cents, they're up... Uh, I don't know, three hundred percent, let's say, uh, on that original position. So they now have three hundred percent more exposure, money wise, wise, and they just added even more. That kind of says something about how good they think the case is. So they probably took as much as they could at twenty-seven cents. And now they are even more bullish on the story and are doubling down, aka averaging up. So if the Lord, I think they are the largest shareholder, they're doubling, they're increasing their position in Magna. They're increasing their exposure in Magna. Magna. And I think that goes for probably the majority of the ones in the previous private placement. I think they are, I, I would guess that most of them are actually aware that this is indeed one of the absolute best cases in the entire space. Personally, I would think they're friggin' morons if they actually took money off the table uh, for some rule. Yes, okay, if they have some risk management, but I don't, I can't even come up with a number of how much they would have. Uh, you know, exposure-wise to say that, hey, you know, uh, well, we have too much, even if it's uh, one of the, you know, biggest no-brainers you're e you'll ever going to see. Uh, so I can vouch for that, how, how smart or not they are. Uh, but this is this is basically as no-brainer as you as you get. So it's like, again, in my book, is like people who, who are selling now, let's say, they don't even know if it's going to go down. The bottom might be in today, it might be in tomorrow, and they would need to, let's say, get a full position in. So it's like, and, and I think we're uh, at least going to $3 per share, and probably within 6 to 12 months. So basically, they're, again, they, they can't even cope, stomach, any kind of short-term risk. And if they're wrong... Let's say, well, let's say it goes down a bit more and then it goes up and then they buy back. Let's say, uh, let's say they think uh, there's going to be a, some big sell off, big sell doesn't materialize. And the market, when everybody sees, let's say, hey, okay, actually, 
uh, the, uh, you know, almost nobody's selling or they've already sold. I mean, I, I bet a bunch of the shorts already are from the PP, uh, private placement holders. So we, we don't know. M maybe it's like, maybe there won't really be any selling. Or maybe it's going to be really, really short-lived. So the, the risk is in that case, if you're wrong on there being like some uh, short-term uh, price down, uh, downside, and, uh, you know, everybody sees this like, hey, okay, geez, th there is not a chance to get in even cheaper. There, there is no big selling coming. Or they have already sold or there's enough buyers who are also waiting to buy all those cheap shares or, you know, the people stupid enough to sell, let's say. So l let's say it goes down and then reverts higher immediately. It's like, okay, just if it gets back to 1.17, for example, all of a sudden your, let's say, easy high probability returns went from 180 to like 150. That's 30% you gave away by gambling on uh, avoiding, let's say, a 10% extra downside or whatever on, on average, uh, you know, base case. That, that is, in my opinion, like always, I don't try to market time. I don't try to trade. If I see a slam dunk case, I want to be heavy and wait for the big returns. Because I can't come up with a more insanely greedy thing than to find something that you know is incredibly cheap. You know it's like if, if there's any stock I'm probably at least going to have a double from, it's let's say Magna. So you know it's like, your base case is whatever I put in in Magna, I'm at least going to double that within 6 to 12 months. Probably 200%, which is like superb, absolutely world-class returns. You don't, you, I mean, if you found one of those every two years, uh, you, you know, you'll be rich in no time, pretty much. Uh, but you say, I mean, if you sell in that case, you're saying that that's not good enough for me. I need better. And typically the ones who do that, basically short-term traders who never can stomach any uh, downside risk, they are the ones who are part of the 95% who never make any real money anyway. Because they're going to be selling every, every low they're going to be selling. Because here they think it's going to go down more. Here they think it's going to go down more. Here they thought it was going to go down more. Somebody who sold today, friggin' moron in my opinion, uh, they think it's going to go down. And again... I can say that without even knowing uh, if there will be any selling. Because by default, the risk reward does not add up. Because if you sell, you're saying again, this is not good enough for me. I'm going to take the risk that I can get even higher returns. That is so insanely greedy. Uh, that well let's let's put it like this these trolls they're probably going to be trolling forums in five ten years because they they'll never figure out how to actually uh, beat the market handedly it just goes without saying if you're if you're a, a chronic forum troller uh, in junior miners uh, i mean if, if you've been in the industry or invested for like 20 30 years and you're not, let's say, have made made enough money by that time that you're still trolling forums. Obviously, you're not a great investor or speculator. Uh, but, but that's what you get. I mean, some people would probably sell their mothers if if they could. Uh, I mean, they're gonna misplay everything anyway because you you don't, in my opinion, an, a no-brainer doesn't need precision. precision. Did you lose anything if it, let's say it goes like this and then up? Did you lose anything? No, you didn't lose anything. Let's say, uh, you know, let's say it trades down for five days and then goes up to $3. The return is exactly the same. So I don't try to predict the market. If, we, if people actually are, in my opinion, dumb enough to be selling because they fear somebody might sell tomorrow I'm gonna be buying more magna and I'm gonna make even more money 
when we get to three dollars per share. If I sold today, because I also can't stomach a short term correction, which is not even guaranteed, and I have to buy back here, I wouldn't forgive myself. I couldn't forgive myself because I would hopefully understand how, how frigging greedy I was. I was willing to risk high returns with a high probability uh, in exchange for possibly avoiding a short term dip or possibly even getting in a bit lower. Jesus, like, do you think any, anyone needed to time uh, all of these moves? Do you think traders made the most in mag? Absolutely not. I have hodled my position and added more pretty much every dip so far. I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure I made more money than any trader in Magna. And I'm 99.9% .9 sure my returns uh, have been and are going to be better than anyone that uh, thinks it's a good idea to uh, give away high probable returns. Uh, in exchange for not, you know, not risking, let's say, a, a short-term dip. Is that, I mean, Magnus is absolutely crazy cheap. Absolutely crazy cheap. The only reason it, it is so cheap is because everybody is, again, focused on this deadline. So everybody is aware of the shares coming free trading. So the question is, how many are even left to sell? And how many are just waiting to buy? I mean, the share price has, I mean, people have been saying it's like, it's going to drop 30% or something. I mean, yesterday we were up and we're, we're, we've been at like, we've been trading higher than the private placement. And again, there's two, we, we don't know the names yet of the institutions, but there's apparently two new big important shareholders that said that, hey, at $1.10 per share of Magna, the case is so good that we don't even need a warrant. Typically, almost every junior uh, that does private placement, uh, you know, can't get a financing off if you don't include a warrant. Magnus one of few that did not include a warrant. So everybody that's selling right now, for example, or sold uh, today under 1.10, they're saying that hey, we're we're better investors or or we're smarter than the big money who, who pretty much took a stake and they take more risk because they can't really unwind their position anyway anytime soon contrary to all the retail people who don't even beat the market so i mean th these are just my uh two cents but it's this is a case study of how you actually beat the market and why everybody for some reason when it comes to Investing is, uh, you know, pretty much a moron uh, because ev everybody is focusing on the exact uh, wrong thing. They're focusing on this. They're not focusing on this. And they're risking this uh, to avoid uh, uh, possi possibly this. It's just crazy. I mean, it is just crazy. But that's how you, that's how you beat this market. You get... Short-term speculators and retail, marginal investor, Josh Mo, is subsidizing the patient long-term investor every day. Because that's the only reason uh, why Magna is still uh, at this price, in my opinion. This so un undervalued. Because everybody's looking at the same thing. But obviously we've seen some good volumes, etc. So there's, and I don't even think everybody that wanted to get into the private placement got into the private placement. And since it was at 1.10, they can already, you know, possibly tomorrow buy lower than the ones, uh, who, the smart money that got into the private placement. And let's say, again, let's just play some scenarios, game theory. Uh, does anything? First of all, does anything happen to the value of Magna if shares become free trading? No, absolutely nothing happens. Magna is cashed up, extremely cheap. Okay. So uh, again, uh, zero, zero, absolute zero effect on the case. Uh, so the question is, do you even know that it's gonna dip? No. 
if it if it dips, will you be able to buy your entire position at uh, the low? Probably not. Do you even know when the low is? Probably not either. And again, what if what if we don't even get a dip? What if you're forced to buy it higher? In that case, you got what you deserved, in my opinion, because you were willing to risk one of the best risk reward profiles of any junior. Uh, uh, you were willing to risk that. You gave away your seat at the table or on the bus because you were hoping that somebody would sell, uh, be dumb enough to sell shares even cheaper. And if that doesn't happen, you won't even be able to get back on the bus cheaper. So you'll have less returns than the ones who did nothing. So again, my, how I look at these things is that this is absolutely a no brainer. Price to value gap is huge. Returns are probable and they are probably high. Uh, that is my base case. If price actually goes down, that means that any additional buy will I expect to make even more on. But I still expect, without doing anything, even though if it goes like this, I will make, my base case is at, uh, I will at least make 100% return on my current position. And I will make 180% on that position even if it goes like this. Even, even if it goes down first. I would expect to still make a relatively easy 180% return. Which is absolutely stellar. If it goes down and I add. I will get 180% on my uh, existing position. But I might be able to get let's say. Uh, maybe 190% on a few buys, maybe 200%, etc, etc. But I'm not dumb enough to be willing to give away my seat at the bus uh, because uh, I'm not sure that people are that dumb that they will actually just, uh, you know, when the whole period is up, that they will literally sell one of the absolute best cases in the entire space. Uh, sure, I don't have a lot of faith in the marginal investor, but I would think that, I mean, like we saw Dundee are obviously well aware and other people see that they are adding, they're not selling, they're, they're doubling down. They increase, they increase their exposure. They didn't take money off the table. They put more money on the table. <laughs> so, so again, uh, I, I don't, I, again, I don't know what what is going to happen i just know what makes uh, the most sense i know i know i'm right i don't think i don't know know the outcome i don't know uh, what is going to happen in the short term but regardless of what it happens even if it goes down it would be stupid it, it, my it, the way i look at it it's absolutely moronic to sell now and it would still have been moronic even if it uh, takes a dip first because we're only dealing with risk reward and there is, contrary to what anyone, any bash or whatever says in the forum, nobody has an idea if we will even get a dip. If we get a dip, we don't even know if it's going to be a 5% dip, 10%, 15% dip. We don't, nobody will know when the bottom is in, etc. Et and again, there's a possibility that we don't really get a dip or we get a short dip and immediately uh, we, we uh, yeah, well, pretty quickly we just turn higher because... Everybody that sold and it, I mean, I, I think there's a bunch of people that have sold and are just waiting to buy back. So I expect there to be some FOMO if the market, when the market thinks, hey, okay, either A, it's not going to, it's not going down. So, I mean, let's say the pre uh, deadline comes, there's barely any down action. I think there's going to be a frenzy to the upside in that case. Uh, let's say we get some down action, but some, you know, people that didn't get into the private placement, for example, yada yada, or people like me, they add, and uh, maybe the dip is short-lived, and then we'll have a frenzy to the upside by everyone that's uh, sitting on the sidelines just waiting to get in at the bottom, which they will never do, 
so that's how I look at it. This is, in my opinion, a, a case study of how you uh, beat the market because nobody uses common sense. Nobody has any concept of risk reward typically. A lot of people are willing to, again, they, they give away no brainers uh, if they uh, fear there's a chance that they will have a paper loss in, in a holding in the short term. Not e and no, nothing is guaranteed. Just, but just the risk of having a paper loss in, in the short term. You know, uh, 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 I, I mean, not a permanent loss. Just a, just, a short, just a short term dip. That is too much for people. That, that immediately typically makes them... Uh, stray away from using common sense so it's like i love the fact that i've played poker before because that uh, risk reward was all there is you never knew typically uh, if you were going to win or lose you had to just play all the scenarios out and think about how much am i going to win if i'm right how much i'm gonna or how much am i going to win if i win how much uh, am i going to lose if i lose and and uh, unlike poker in the market uh, uh, corrections are not permanent losses but if you lose a hand in poker you're not getting that money back but you you never lost anything it's like people congratulating me with uh, when magna hit here it's like well uh, the story isn't over so and uh, of course you know four or five days later i was down so it, it i mean until the story is over you cannot count your chickens or whatever the expression is but anyway, it's like I hope this is something that I think really needs to. It pains me to see that. I mean, there are some, uh, at least in the forum, who's like, yeah, they're they're well aware. Uh, they're well aware uh, that uh, I mean, th this is just a new, no brain. This is just stupid. I mean, should it? It's it's. I'm 90% certain it's not going to stay down here for long. And I, again, my bottom line is I am not willing to risk giving away high probable returns just because there's a chance that I might get even better returns. Because if I'm wrong, uh, I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I won't give, even get the 180%. So again, by selling, you're saying that, hey, 180%, uh, let's say, probable returns is not good enough, which is just absurd because almost nobody even beats an index. And, and that's typically why they don't beat an index. They make really stupid decisions. And I, I'm, I just want to re reiterate that if you understand what I'm talking about, you will also understand that uh, this is common sense based on risk reward regardless of what actually happens because nobody knows the future so we have to be we have to do the most rational thing today with the information we have today without knowing what's going to happen tomorrow i haven't i i didn't try to trade or uh, predict any dips in magna i i just bought every dip I just reacted to the opportunities Mr. Market offered me and uh, that has worked out well. And I think this is just another case of that. And this is why I expect to beat the junior sector as long as I have my uh, mental health in order, let's say. Because these things keep happening over and over and over again because people never change. And people typically, for some reason, e even though people are not dumb, for some reason when it comes to money and how they look at risk and they think price risk is permanent risk, yada. So there's a bunch of stuff they actually don't get right. And that's why most people, even smart people, don't make any money really because they haven't uh, thought out their risk reward. So, uh, oh, and again, of course, what's going to happen, okay? Now with the private placement is closed, now I think there's more likelihood that they can uh, start uh, releasing assets uh, again. So we have at least seven holes waiting to be released from the first campaign. They've, they've already been drilled. I think they've drilled like three, four holes perhaps of the 15,000 meter 
campaign as well. So uh, we're probably like the like the analyst report says. Uh, Continue to test shallow targets to infill areas of open pit, blah, blah, blah. So I expect there to be as a result throughout the whole year. And we know how good those can be. Not that every will be one of these, you know. Uh, I mean, Magna basically drilled the best holes uh, every day they released holes. I, I, we can't bank on every hole being so absurdly good. Uh, but I expect they are going to pull out some more born burners or at least you know top 10 percent of holes drilled whatever day uh, they release them uh, and, and some will probably miss but if they find a make a football discovery etc things will change the pa when that comes out i think it's gonna uh rebel as well so that, that's what i see it's like if i fast forward from to uh, today to just six months i think Magna uh, is probably going to be materially higher than now. So that is my case. That is why I'm not willing to risk uh, losing, let's say, these 180% returns because the, we might get, I, I might get a chance to get 200% uh, returns. Because who knows if, if it actually goes up instead or the uh, dip is short lived and I don't even get. To be, I don't. I'm not even able to buy back my position, so maybe I'm down to 150% returns. What, and why would I be? Uh, what happened that uh, made it so? It was because I was greedy. 180% was not good enough, so I had to rebuy later on, and I just gave away 30%. Uh, a bird in the hand is worth more than two birds in the bush. That, that's basically the this whole concept is what it is so yeah uh, again it's like uh, be be careful who you let's say listen to uh, there's i mean we all talk, talk our books obviously but i i doubt that like rocket red for example i'm pretty sure you understand that this is one of the best cases around and uh, again i would probably join him in, in bashing if i didn't have a rule that uh yeah, so it's like if, if Magna opens down, well, I'm going to be buying more Magna tomorrow anyway, if it's at this level. Uh, if it goes down, I'll buy more. If it goes down, I'll buy more. Uh, and then uh, uh, one day or one minute, the bottom tick will be in and we don't know it's going to be the short term bottom. And then, uh, you know, it's probably going to go higher again. And I, I would think we're going to get to at least three dollars per share sometime this year yeah anyway uh thanks for listening uh consider me biased i own a lot of shares of magna mining and i think i've at least explained that pretty well in previous videos etc so and you do exactly what you want to do uh if you want to if you want to sell sell if you want to buy buy i'm just saying what i do how i beat the market uh, what things I how I take advantage of uh, short term speculators basically 95% of people because they typically tend to be watching a tree when you should be watching the forest at all times and this is the forest in my opinion and this is just a fair value for what you already have so there's no exploration risk uh, really even uh, which is I mean why the risk reward is so absurd uh yeah uh, they're a sponsor etc uh do your own due diligence uh don't invest money you cannot afford to lose assume i might buy or sell shares at any point so it's like you have to have your game plan uh, you know you must know what you are doing uh and read up on the story and, and uh even more importantly just read up on how you invest and just think a lot about mistakes people do and how you take advantage of it uh, because again th there's it's the marginal investor who's buying and selling every day and the marginal investor is not a good investor so either you are the che sheep or uh, if you buy a share there's a 95 percent chance that uh, one selling is the sheep and vice versa anyway uh, take care bye